these tangy cheeses I love with with sharp whites. I love the sharpness of the Dante and the and the, the 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 high the higher acidity and the the crunchy red fruits of the of the Pinot are a good match. When you have like a like a, a goat's milk cheese like like the like the Coupelet, a really high acid tart like Chardonnay driven sparkling wine in the Loire Valley goat cheese and Sancerre like Sauvignon like really high acid lean Sauvignon Blanc. It's a perfect match, kind of matches that intensity. And I think that the, the mineral and the high acid and the really bright, like Granny Smith apple, like acidity and the tanginess of the cupole, I think, are just, are undeniable for me. Delicious. Something has to do with more about how wines feel together and, and wine and food feel together than, than the actual flavors themselves. They can provide a general background, um, but again, that's where the like, tasting food and wine together is, is important. As soon as I saw that sheet and I saw short rib and Corbier, I was like, that's the pairing I wanted. That's, and not to, to sell everything else short, because I wanted to make sure I gave everything else its shot, but what you're looking for is the most magical pairing. That was probably gonna be it before it even started. Now, pork belly and pinot, that. also also gonna be good. Now, there's a there's an element there of, of, you can't just take protein into consideration with wine, you have to take into consideration sauce. Okay, that sauce had sweetness to it. And that's what turned, that's what turned the Dardouille Bourgogne Rouge away from that pairing. But the short rib and the Corbiere, I mean, Corbiere, Grenache, Syrah, Morved, Sanso type blends, those are made for rich, rustic countryside dishes. That's exactly what the short rib was. Simon B's Bourgogne Blanc. Fantastic. Great Dominic Mounieret Bourgogne Rouge 08. Couple of things that can prove to be difficult for wine pairing. There are wines out there, more vegetal wines that can start to pair with various artichokes and other whack of them. You can find the right things, but they're they're difficult. And maybe maybe not maybe not here today. Sometimes you have pairings that the food makes the wine taste better, or the wine makes the food taste better. And what you're looking for is synergy. Rabbit confit, any confit, literally all day long with Pinot, done. Again, you're yeah, you're, tra you're transporting yourself to Burgundy, into France, countryside. But you take that Italian twist on it, and you throw creamy spinach in it, and like and pasta, starchy. Like you gotta start changing your thinking. Like that dish would be reserved for like a rich Italian white, and. You know, again, just a richer style of wine. Wines that are from places, and you get to you get to eat like that. I think subconsciously, we all know that those are the best pairings. Those are the those are what you're looking for. A simply cooked pork tenderloin and mushrooms. Again, Burgundy. That's mushroom country and rich meats country. I mean, Burgundy and things like that. that you know, those are. Style dishes with burgundy wine, and, and, and nobody's gonna deny that Dominic Mounieret is a great producer. That's a great wine. Wine and food are all about transportation and and dining, and um, I think that transports you somewhere. So classic descriptor for burgundy for French, you know, even New World Pinot actually uh, has this kind of forest floor kind of underbrush kind of thing. Um, now as burgundy gets older, now that's a very new burgundy. But as burgundy gets older, those the fruitier turn, tones kind of subside, and those earthier tones come up, and you get this mushroomy kind of note. And so mushrooms and burgundy are inherently, and again, you know, uh, burgundy black truffles, right? I mean, mushrooms and burgundy, and the wines are all very synergistic. Complexity and depth to the to the wine, and I think that it's herbal and, and candied and richer notes. I think are I think are pairing well with the the uh, the Parson and Bravioli. Uh, this wine is intense. I mean, this wine has got body and weight, and I think that um, this winter-inspired 
dish that again from first perception looks dark and rich and hearty is very I mean it's got intense flavors but it's very delicate so uh, I'm gonna be in for the Lafarge Alligo day and the uh, and the uh, the ravioli for sure the, the rule of thumb is the wine should be and obviously we're not dealing with dessert wines here but the wine should be sweeter than the dessert but I think now we're looking more for more of that texture sensation chocolate and red wine it's like cheese sometimes a classic misnomer for pairing um, Again, sometimes chocolate can be too sweet for red wine. And so ports and chocolate can go very well, but you have to get really dark and bitter chocolate. Otherwise, sugars fight. You go brush your teeth, have a sip of orange juice, terrible, right? The same thing happens with red wine and chocolate. The champagne is, so the airiness of the mousse is, and the, the weight and mineral content and the, the bitterness is in the chocolate, and the bitterness is in the champagne. Um, a better match. You know, I think that a, a dish of sorbet and the Bertolo champagne feels like a summer patio special. That, that's that's my choice. Truthfully, as a country, we're only beginning to realize what food and wine mean on the table together. In Europe, you're looking at an ideal that wine is a grocery you buy bread you buy milk you buy eggs you buy cheese you buy meat you buy wine it's not like you buy all your groceries and go oh i bought this great piece of meat let's go out and buy a bottle of wine at the grocery store if you pick beverage first it's much easier to go food to wine than it is wine to food right. if you truthfully truthfully are out for the pairing tell your psalm look i really want this bottle of alsatian mm -hmm. riesling i love this wine can you please curtail a menu around that? Mm -hmm. We're gonna have one bottle. Right. The most magical pairing, I'm gonna say it's a cross between the red burgundy and the pork tenderloin with mushrooms, and truthfully, the short rib with the corbiere. I mean, you know what? That was a pairing for a day like today. Like, that was an all-encompassing pairing. Cold outside, rainy, with friends, braised meat, southern French red. That's what wine's all about is experience too. That was a good one. That was a good pairing.